from the Aria Resort in Las Vegas, it's The Q, covering AWS Marketplace. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with The Q. We're at AWS reInvent in uh, Las Vegas. I don't know, 50,000, 60,000. I can't wait till the number comes in. There's a lot of people at this event. Been coming for years. We actually have nine days of coverage here spread out over three sets in four different locations, but we're kicking it off tonight at the AWS Marketplace and Service Catalog event here at the Aria. Come on by, there's no lines over here. I'm sure there's giant lines over at the Sands. And we're excited to, to see an old friend and make a new friend and talk about service catalogs from some of the experts. And Dave Wright, uh, Chief in Innovation Officer from ServiceNow has been on many, many times. Dave, great to see you. No, good to be here. And our new friend, Masanya Scott, she's Senior Business Development Manager, AWS Service Catalog. Hi, Welcome. how are you? Thank you. So there's a lot of talk about service catalog. We know about the ServiceNow service catalog, we've got the AWS service catalog, but yes. now you guys have brought these th two things together. Yes. Why, why did you bring it together? How did it happen? How did we get here today? So at AWS, 95% of our features are based on what customer feedback, and so we were listening to our customers tell us that, hey, it's your, your innovation in the AWS service catalog where you provide the governance, the guardrails, the launch constraints is great, but we already have a service catalog with our ITSM tools, such as ServiceNow, and how can we federate that, ingest the details and the information into uh, ServiceNow so we can do it in one place, so our developers don't have to swivel chair between two different systems. Right. So we listened to that feedback, got requirements, started a proof of concept, and then we uh, built on it, and we're now on our third iteration. And Dave, what were you hearing from your side of the of this chair? So we were getting, customers were coming to us saying they wanted, they wanted a similar experience so they were getting using a regular service catalog. So they wanted a, a unified experience. They wanted uh, the ability to have governance and control over what was happening. But most importantly, they wanted us to integrate because they'd say, hey, you two are both strategic platforms for us. We don't want to go the last mile and have to write the integration, so you guys need right. to work together and sort it out. So it was very much customer driven. It was customers that were saying, we want you guys to work together more closely. I love it. I, lo I just love the customer centric nature because we hear it over and over again. Yeah. And this is you know, kind of a great example of a real instance. And you didn't really care, per se, who's was kind of on top. You know, what are they logging into initially? Right. You just wanted to get the integration done. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and it sounds like today, right now, it's a service now login, and then it integrates with the AWS yeah. service catalog yeah. underneath. Right, so for the AWS service catalog, we stay the source of truth for all the resources, the products, and the portfolios, and then we sync to ServiceNow service catalog through uh, their scheduled job process, and uh, we, we expose products that the uh, ServiceNow administrator wants their end users to see. So they can order an iPhone, and now they can order a web server. <laughs> and where's the identity? Is that, is that in the ServiceNow platform now, in terms of the rights and, and access that an individual person has so we have inside a of your app catalog? In ServiceNow, where you uh, correlate the identities in uh, AWS to a role in ServiceNow. Okay. So that's that. And then the, the best thing about the app is that the ServiceNow end user doesn't have direct access to the AWS console. Right. They just order what is a compliant, secure product that right. they need to have. And then even in the AWS console, the, uh, the connection only gives the uh, end user role that's assumed access to the AWS service catalog, so not even direct resources to EC2 or S3, and so what that enables is that segregation of duty. Right. And so they we put the permissions on the launch constraints, and then they deploy products, and then you can give the evidence when in an audit to what, what you've provisioned. Okay, and then where is this kind of in, in the life cycle? You said, I think we're you're kind of past PLCs, getting into, into production. Yeah, our yeah. customers are, are starting to move to production, doing PLCs, giving us feedback, and as they give us more feedback, we're creating more releases. We launched our uh, third iteration of features last Monday, the 19th, and uh, what we did was we integrated not only just AWS Service Catalog, but the ability through AWS Systems Manager to do SSM actions. So you, if you provision a web server, now you can start, stop, reboot it. 
And so, um, and then once you do that, we create a change in ServiceNow's IT change management. So we, we're moving more to from provisioning as well as into operational actions as well. And that's what, so that was what was great for us was, if you've got that, if you've got that point of initiation where you know something's happening, we can then, we can then update the CMDB in real time, we can start looking at software asset management so we can see what's deployed. And then we've also found there's great use cases where we can look at how we actually map the service to then be able to use Amazon's cloud migration products to be able to speed up migrations as well. Yes, yes. And so customers are not only just provisioning uh, storage or EC2s, but anything from a cloud formation template, uh, workspace, an Amazon workspace. Right. You can also send those requests through ServiceNow, and we've gotten a lot of feedback on that. Right. We have sessions and builder projects today at, at reInvent that are showing how that works. So it begs the question, obviously, down the road, you know, will, will kind of the priority switch from the customer perspective? You know, will, will ServiceNow be integrated in through the marketplace of the service catalog and people access it through I that think way? There's, I think there's no, there's no reason why it couldn't be at some point. The only, the only challenge we have at the moment is Obviously people are using the service catalog to provision all kinds of things as, right. as well as AWS components. Right, right. But yeah, if you were, a, if you were a, a, a core AWS shop and that was what you were using everything for, there's no reason why you couldn't flip that around. Right. I would yeah. just think of, you know, who, what, what screen are you on all day, right? That's the, you know, right. everybody wants your right. attention, they want that screen, and if that's your work screen, that's your work screen. So now you opening this up, you know, really adds a whole lot of power to a ServiceNow work screen that wasn't there before. Well, we've always focused on kind of changing what the employee experience was like to just try and give them, ironically, an Amazon-like experience. Yeah. <laughs> we've always said, <laughs> yeah. it's easy for me to order stuff in the, in the real world, for me to just get something from Amazon, right. why couldn't I have exactly that same right. experience when I wanted to order right. any piece of IT equipment, whether it be physical, virtual, peripherals, whatever. Right. Right? So that's why we're trying to change the experience, but it's funny that it's come through that full circle of everyone going, right. oh, it'd be good if it was like that, and then right. we end up yeah. working with these guys anyway. Yeah. So did you get a cake? <laughs> did I get a cake? I've seen many cakes in my, <laughs> my career, but no, I think you need to send me a yeah, cake. You didn't do a go live cake, cake. you're right. I know. Yeah, you got to get know. a go live cake once uh, once you get that first uh, that first wand up and yes. official and ready to roll. We got to do that and take you a to picture. See your partner it's manager. a huge tradition. It's one of the oh, coolest things in... of the ServiceNow uh, culture I have, yes. I have to say. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, good. so Lenny, any you know final words on this partnership beyond just continuing to make the improvements get closer into production and build more functionality, anything you want to highlight as you so turn the calendar on 2018 and 2019 just around the so corner? So we're looking to get feedback more on not just provisioning, but going through other management tool services and trying to see what the customers are, are looking for. So, so that's one of those key features is building bigger, not just AWS service catalog, but a, a, a connector between the two platforms so that we can c c continue to create that synergy. Excellent. All right, well thanks for taking a few minutes of your day and uh, we'll see you, I think in May, usually yeah. when we see you. <laughs> <laughs> when we see AWS all, I think we, I think we had like six shows this year. You guys just okay. keep rolling. Yes. So uh, thanks for taking a few minutes and have a terrific show. No, great okay. to be here, thank, thank you. you. All right, she's with Sonia. He's Dave, I'm Jeff, you're watching theCUBE. It's the AWS Marketplace Service Catalog Enterprise Hub at the Aria, come on by, thanks for watching.